The Lovell Beach House was one of the first modern houses on the west coast of the United States. It has remarkable similarities with the international style of modern architecture that was emerging in Europe in the work of Gropius, Le Corbusier, and others in the 1920s. But because it stands here in Newport Beach, about an hour's drive south of Los Angeles, it was ignored by historians of modern architecture until the late 50s. When the house was begun in 1922, there were hardly any buildings at all on this stretch of sand. Dr. Lovell was thought eccentric to want to live directly on the beach. In fact, this stretch forms a long, narrow peninsula separated from the mainland by a narrow bay. Today, the beachfront at Newport is entirely built up, but the Lovell Beach House still looks remarkably eccentric and modern. You can see how later houses built here in the 50s and 60s have adopted some of the features of the Lovell Beach House. Large windows, flat roofs, and balconies looking out toward the sea. Most of these later houses are built of timber rather than concrete. In the distance, the coastal mountains of Southern California are visible. Dr. Philip Lovell, who still lives here, was a successful, though unconventional, doctor in the 1920s. He believed strongly in natural methods of treating disease, pure foods, lots of fresh air and sunshine, and he was opposed to all forms of drugs and chemicals. He wrote a very popular weekly column in the Los Angeles Times called Care of the Body, and also several books in which he explained his theories. decided to build a summer house on some land he owned here at Newport Beach. He chose as his architect R.M. Schindler. Schindler was a young Viennese who had come to the United States to work with Frank Lloyd Wright in Chicago. He came out to California to supervise a house Wright was building in Los Angeles. Dr. Lovell met Schindler early in the 20s. They both moved in the liberal intellectual circles of the day. Richard Neutra, another Viennese architect who is to be an important figure in modern architecture in America, was also part of this group. Dr. Lovell gave Schindler the commission for the beach house, even though the young architect had built almost nothing at that time. One of the few houses R.M. Schindler had built on the West Coast was for himself and his young wife. The house in Kings Road, Hollywood, was in fact built for two families. The Schindlers shared it with their friends, the Clyde Chases. Each family had its own set of living rooms, but the kitchen was shared, the idea being that the wives could take turns cooking for both families and avoid some of the day-to-day -day drudgery of housework. Schindler conceived of the house as a series of living spaces. Each adult member had a private area. You can see these marked on the plan. RMS was Schindler, SPG was Mrs. Schindler, and so on. The house was constructed of concrete slabs which were poured on the site and then tilted up to form the walls. Tiny window slits between the slabs admit light. This ingenious method of construction became commonplace in Southern California many years later. This way of construction was cheap very important to a penniless young architect with a wife and child to support. Clear story windows, timber framed, rise above the wall height and allow light to penetrate the interior. The effect of light at different times of day is very subtle. The atmosphere of harmony and tranquility that pervades the house is almost impossible to capture with the camera. Perhaps you may be reminded of the adobe pueblos of the Indians of New Mexico or the traditional houses of Japan. As well as the beach house, Dr. Lovell asked Schindler to design two other small buildings for him at this time. One was a ranch house of 1925 in the country at Fallbrook near San Diego. Here, Schindler again experimented with slab construction. 
The other was a mountain cabin built in 1926. Like the beach house, the cabin consisted of a two-story living area with tiny sleeping cubicles. It was an absolute disaster, since Schindler, still inexperienced but faithful to the dictates of the modern movement, insisted on designing the tiny cabin with a flat roof. Six feet of snow fell the first winter. Dr. Lovell did not want to be filmed himself, but I asked him what features he especially wanted in the beach house. He said he wanted to be as near as possible to the outdoors, and he wanted to be able to sleep in the nude in privacy. It was to be an informal summer vacation house. The interpretation of Lovell's brief, and thus the actual form of the house, was entirely the creation of R. M. Schindler. Schindler created one great two-story living space with the dining area behind and the tiny kitchen separated by a wall. The main living space is raised up on concrete stilts. The reasons for this were not just to provide a better view of the Pacific, but also to protect the house from the high tides which occur in August and September, to leave play area on the small lot, and to provide the maximum amount of privacy. When the house was first built, the sea came up much closer than it does today. The house took 15 months to build, and its unusual design did not please the local planning authorities. Schindler had two men who worked for him, and between them they did all the building work, plastering, plumbing, wiring, pouring of concrete, carpentry, and so on. A conventional contractor could never have understood exactly what Schindler wanted. Dr. Lovell told me about Schindler's unorthodox method of working. He didn't make detailed working drawings for the building, but rather relied on a series of rough sketches made on the spot. This model of the house, as it originally looked, allows us to appreciate the three-dimensional qualities of the design, qualities which are obscured today by recent building and planting. The concrete stilts on which the house stands are clearer, making a greater contrast between the living space and the structure. The effect of the sleeping porches before they were enclosed enhances the unity of interior and exterior spaces, which is an essential feature of the house. The east and south sides of the house have been altered most. Most of the details on the south side have disappeared though they originally played an important part in the overall rhythm of the composition. By removing the roof of this model, one can appreciate the clarity of interior spaces as they originally were. Outside here, you can see how the parts of the concrete frame form an open box which defines the space within without confining it in any way. Originally, the area under the house was designed as play space and garages. There was even an outside fireplace for barbecues, but it never drew properly and so was never used. Schindler's weak spot was practicality. The Lovells had a lot of trouble with such things as plumbing for years afterwards. The fireplace is part of the structure. It is of reinforced concrete. The flow of space in the main living area is vertical rather than horizontal, with the living room punctuated to one side by the long balcony which serves as a passage to the sleeping porches. 
The long horizontal of the interior balcony echoes the horizontal lines made on the exterior by the enclosed sleeping porch windows and balcony. The large two-story window looking toward the ocean dominates the living area. The dining area is separated from the living room by a wall. It incorporates this decorative panel, a built-in seat, and shelves to one side. Behind is the wall which separates living area and services. The top of this wall was intended as a planter and is still used as such today. Schindler designed built-in furniture for the entire house. It was made on the site using the same timber that was used in the construction of the house itself. Even the light fittings became part of the abstract design. Here, he has used ordinary light bulbs in a vertical line. The use of clear story windows for high-level lighting was a favorite technique of Schindler's, one he employed at his own King's Roadhouse, as we have seen. You can see clear story windows in the bedrooms, too. Additional light enters at clear story level. These windows also give a lightness to the structure. They separate the heavy wall and ceiling elements by transparent space. The beach and ocean are always visible from inside. The large window in the living room served to link the interior and the exterior. managed to get a great variety of abstract form into the building, from the larger volumes of the concrete framework to even the smallest details. As at the Roby House, even the smallest detail repeats the general theme of the interplay of geometric volumes. The large window is broken up into small panes of glass separated by wooden glazing bars, the effect is rather Wrightian. Originally, there were the same decorative details in the smaller windows. At the back, where there were fewer functional considerations, Schindler allowed himself free play with abstract detailing. One is reminded of the motifs of Frank Lloyd Wright and of the de Stael designers. The design of the bathroom shows how Schindler incorporated another of Dr. Lovell's unusual ideas. These marathon showers, as they were called, were a fashionable method of weight reducing in the 1920s. The shower was designed so that one could lie down in it and let the needles of water massage the body. 
It was also possible for two people to shower together here. is flat and up here is the enclosed sunbathing area that's such an important feature of the design. Dr. Lovell strongly believed in the beneficial effects of ultraviolet light and up here members of the Lovell family and their friends could enjoy the sea air and sunshine unclothed and in complete privacy. How did Schindler satisfy Dr. Lovell's demand for open air sleeping areas? He designed this balcony which runs the length of the living room about eight feet up. Off this opened a series of tiny bedrooms, which in turn opened into individual sleeping porches. These porches were originally completely open and were separated from one another by partitions. The horizontal slits, which are evident on old photos and which you can see on the exterior of the house, were designed so that as you lay in bed, you had a view of the beach at eye level. Unfortunately, Schindler had not calculated that the prevailing winds brought the rain straight onto the beds. So the slits were filled in and the porches enclosed with glass. The four bedrooms themselves, which all had built-in wardrobes, were intended simply as private dressing areas. A few years after the Lovell Beach House was completed, in 1929, Dr. Lovell engaged Richard Neutra to build him a home in Los Angeles. This received a lot of publicity and was called the Health House because it too was designed to embody Dr. Lovell's theories. The site is a sloping one which looks out over the Los Angeles basin. The house is on three levels. The front door from the street is at the top level where the bedrooms are situated. Here too there were sleeping porches but they were never a success and rarely used. Only one survives. Immediately to the left of the entrance hall is a staircase which leads down into the main living room. It runs the length of the building on the second level. Also on the second level are kitchen and dining room. The third level is the outdoor swimming pool patio which shelters below the living room of the house. As at Newport Beach, there was also a built-in barbecue. The swimming pool itself was intended to use unchlorinated water. To keep the pool clean, the water was changed every two weeks. The old water was used to irrigate the garden. The structure of the house consists of a steel frame, chosen because the Bethlehem Steel Company offered Dr. Lovell a preferential rate for the components in exchange for publicity in his column. This old photograph shows the construction in progress. The entire frame was erected in a very short time. Over the years, some of the steel supports have begun to corrode. The Lovell House, with its white walls, long areas of windows, flat roofs, projecting balconies, and abstract composition, is a classic example of international-style architecture, probably the first true example to be built in the United States. While Schindler was turning away from the simplicity of international style dogma, in fact, he was never a member of the movement, toward an increasingly complex and varied type of design, Neutra perfected the simplified modern of Gropius and Le Corbusier at this house and later in buildings he was to design in California in the 30s and 40s.
all the necessary elements specified by Dr. Lovell for the healthy life were incorporated into this show house. The windows could all be opened to allow cross ventilation in four directions. All the glass used was so designed as to let the ultraviolet rays of the sun penetrate into the house. One could get a suntan inside. This was probably one of the first modern houses designed with an integral swimming pool. The house was raised above the city where, even in pre-smog days, the air was cleaner and fresher. Outside, there were various recreation areas incorporated into the design to satisfy Dr. Lovell's requirements. Both these houses, though long ignored by architects and historians in Europe and in most of the United States, are today recognized as important monuments of modern architecture. Schindler's Lovell Beach House was not published in European magazines until relatively recently. Yet the ideas embodied in this house, the product of two minds, Lovell and Schindler, were the same ideas being explored by architects in Holland, France, and Germany at exactly the same time.